hey everybody welcome to the fire it up with dj show today we are going to be learning about body language and what your body is actually telling other people and the messages that they're receiving and we're going to be talking about this book winning body language by mark uh, by mark Bowden. and we're going to learn all about body language at work so welcome mark Hey there, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Really exciting to talk to you. I'm excited to have you here too. And you know what was so hard about reading your book is I went through all of my shows and thought, am I doing what he's saying or am I not doing what he's saying? Am I, am I, am I lifting my eyebrows and smiling? <laughs> all these things. It made me completely paranoid and completely paranoid for this whole interview because of your book. But it's, we're going to learn a ton and learn all about our body language and what we're saying about ourselves when we're talking well I won't, I won't be judging you throughout this you can, you can judge me viewers can judge me there'll be no judgment on you do you know what i did when i was watching your videos i was actually mirroring your body gesture so i could kind of in my unconscious mind get my body used to like using my arms and lifting my arms and, yeah. and all those kind of things it's not a natural sometimes it's an it, it's a natural thing but oftentimes these kind of things can they can help well, look, I mean, any, anything that we don't normally do often feels a little unnatural. Yeah, at first. Of course, anything a human being can do is natural. Yeah. But there's things that, there's behaviors, there's gestures that won't often feel innately natural to us. But often, I mean, that's great what you're doing, which is to mimic me, to see what it feels like yeah. to use some of the gestures that I use. And yeah. people can, can use that all the time as a way of training themselves in body language, is to look at people who they think perform really well, right. look at people who have an attitude that they really like and respect, and copy their behaviors. You know, one right. of the first ways we begin to learn is simply by copying. Copying right. and mimicking is a great way to start learning how to behave. Yeah, and there's that whole fabulous Amy Cuddy video where it's about, you know, just basically standing in those positions, you know, the power position or the you know, whatever it is, is those positions, so that you can kind of embody the energy around it and get used to doing that. So I think that there's a lot to be said about copying these positions and kind of learning the signals that you're offering unconsciously to other people, whether you're aware about sure. it or not. For sure. If, if people haven't seen uh, Dr. Amy Cuddy's uh, TED Talk, uh, they really should, you know, um, uh, Cuddy has done a, a brilliant talk there on what we call embodied cognition, which is mm -hmm. the idea that if you change the environment, you change the way you think mm -hmm. and you change the action that happens around around that. So what, what Cuddy is talking about is how you can stand or perform in specific ways that change actually the, um, the makeup of chemicals going around your body, essentially right. how the endocrine system is yeah. formed, and therefore change the neurotransmitters going around in your brain. In this case, what she talks about is testosterone right. levels, but we know for sure that certain gestures can not only change testosterone, but dopamine and oxytocin right. as well. So you can do stuff with your body which will fundamentally change the way your mind is working, and therefore, not only the way that you're perceived by others, but the way you perceive the world because of your behavior. It, right. it is fantastic. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna show, so some of them are like, this is the, you know, the mm. kind of power position, or mm. or you see this lot in meetings, where people yeah, are doing yeah. the peacocking thing, those are some kind of, the other one I think was this one, is that she had? Sure, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I guess, and, and what was interesting about your book is it has a very similar kind of tone. There's a there's a neuroscience, a way that we've evolved as human beings that have created these, right? Like, when you see someone at the Olympics, you know, they're like yeah. like this, or the Super Bowl, you know, they're like this because they're ecstatic. And so we look, we actually look at those and say, oh, that's an ecstatic person, right? Wow. So we do what's called getting theory of mind. When we see somebody in that ecstatic celebratory, yeah. you know, they just, yeah. they just won position. Yeah. What happens is, is we've got mirror neurons in our brain, or at least look, the current sciences, yeah. and, and with any science, there's always right. conflicting science as well. Right. Science is only the best idea we have today based on how we went to get that idea, essentially. Yeah. Science is a great thing. It changes day to day, week to week, year to year, uh, and if you're from a science background or you agree with science, you, you tend to change your views as science changes. Right. So, so current science would kind of suggest that we've got these mirror neurons and, and they can copy 
other people's behavior. Just by seeing, just by seeing somebody, as long as the image is clear, we copy that and then our brain goes, so what, how would I feel if I was like that? Right. And then we project it onto them. We don't, we're not mind readers. Nobody's right. a mind reader. They don't actually know how somebody else right. is feeling. Right, the viewer we're projects that sense of confidence or ex right. ecstasy based on what they're seeing. Absolutely, we project it and then we believe it's real. Right. We believe, yes, they are celebrating. Now, chances right. are, if it's a good prediction, they are celebrating, right. but it's not necessarily true. People right. who think they're very good mind readers and maybe are quite accurate most of the time, right. it's not because they're good mind readers, they're just quite accurate about their predictions. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. And, and for, for most of us, as, my, as, as people who feel we might be good mind readers, we just forget the times we got it wrong. Yeah. Okay, I have so so I looked at her her um, her video or and I thought, okay, I've actually been in business meetings. I, it was the funniest thing. We were in a negotiation. I was at Microsoft. We were in a negotiation with like some high end, I don't know, like Merrill Lynch or Schwab or whatever. Sure. It's a bunch of super yeah. amped up people, right? Yeah. And uh, what I noticed was um, the main guy on the negotiating side went like this. Oh yeah. Yeah, so it's like... Kick back, yeah. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it was just fascinating, because I was the person who's going to negotiate the deal. Then I yeah. saw the his second guy go like this. Oh, yeah. And then probably, I'm not joking, in the middle of like, a minute, in a matter of three minutes, all the men were going like this. And I thought, well, maybe I should do that. But I, that's <laughs> a, <laughs> naturally what... Yeah. And I thought, well, what is this? This is like a, this is exerting, is this an exerting dominance? What is this kind of pose? Interesting. So let, let's look at the biology of it and yeah. look at what happens in the space and biologically when when this happens. Now, yeah. uh, notice that body language comes from a part of the brain, the brain stem, mm -hmm. uh, which is only to do with our survival. Right. Yeah. Uh, but also it is tribal as, as well, right. or and especially a part of it called the limbic system of this primitive brain is, is, right. is tribal. So it understands my survival, and if you're part of my tribe, my group, my gang, my company, it also understands your survival, our relationship right. around right. that, our gang survival. So if I do this, if I were to be attacked right. at this point, I, I would be in big trouble. Right. Because I just come right with you for the night and get you right in your gut. This area here, which is very, very right. vulnerable yeah. to attack, this is now open, this belly right. area. If this gets damaged, I'm in big, big trouble. Right. And also, my ability now to stand up and run right. is now, I'll just fall over. Right. Okay. Now, also, there's some delicate areas here yeah. as well, which yeah. I've opened up. But at the same time, I am making myself look very big across yeah. the shoulder You're area. You're peacocking. You're a peacock. Right. So you I'm want to bang with me. <laughs> I'm displaying. Look at me. Look at how big my chest area yeah. is. Look at how vulnerable I am right. there. Now, also, we give off scent here and here. I'm also oh. filling the room with my scent. It's basically saying, I own this territory. Wow. Yeah, I'm filling the room with that with that uh, scent. Right, now, I can right. make it look even more, I guess, impressive, not necessarily likable, right. <laughs> but impressive, <laughs> by also displaying my carotid arteries and windpipe. Oh, yes. But oh, look at you. <laughs> I don't think you're going to attack at all. Right. Because look how vulnerable this yeah. area is. Yes. I'm um, so much better and superior to you that right. no, I don't even worry about you. Exactly. And what you find in a tribe is, is often people will mirror the alpha, uh, whether it's male or female, doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. They will mirror the person who they feel is in charge and has the most resource. Yeah. Or sometimes they will just show deference to yeah. that. So there could have been, in that meeting that you're talking about, there could have been some competition there. Yes about who was in charge. Yeah, there there was. could have been some people trying to mirror the person in charge, going, well, the more I mirror the person in charge, the more I'm like the person in charge, yeah. the more chance of being in charge I'll ever be. Right, yeah. yes. It was and, both of those things, for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah because for the, sure. the person we're negotiating went like this, and then the guy, the head guy on my side who was going to make the decision went like this, and right. then all their underlings started mirroring them. It was the 
funniest thing. But then it was signaling because I thought, oh, there's a person ultimately making the decision on their end. If it wasn't clear to me, it became clear when this person went like this. Right. That they're the decision maker on that side. And everybody started to copy. Yeah. So that looks like tribal conflict. Yeah. yeah. One team makes a move, the other team make a move, all the other team members yeah. make a move. Yeah, they all now, pulled out their guns. <laughs> <laughs> here's the thing. People don't necessarily do this, though, because they're confident. Wow. They're often doing it to display confidence when actually they feel vulnerable. Oh, fascinating. Yes. So, so this doesn't, I don't necessarily do this because I internally, consciously or unconsciously, I feel super confident. It actually might be that I'm feeling unbalanced, I'm feeling nervous, I'm, and, and what my body wants to do is make itself feel more confident or cause you to back off, oh, to send you a signal to go, look, I own this territory. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. what body language does is sends a signal to others so that they'll change their behavior now to ah, my own. Interesting. Okay, so how can you also tell them that? What are some other signals that people make? When you've been in meetings, you've seen people mm -hmm. that either signal they're insecure, they're not confident, they're not sure of themselves. What are the things that you've seen? So let's just take a, take a simple thing. Let's just yeah. take a simple concept of, uh, you know, big bodies, small bodies. Right. Okay. So... Uh, and, and this is a case of big body. Let me right. let me just show you some small some small. Okay. Body. What okay. what happens if I do this and and this and make myself look? Smaller? I'm trying to be invisible. You're trying to make right. yourself invisible. Yeah. Right. And now, what if I stay just really still? You're scared. You don't want me to right. notice you. So that would be I'm small, and I'm in freeze. And if you're a predator, please just walk on by. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Got it. So basically, it's, it's like it's 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 hiding. I mean, it happens in the shrug gesture. Let me just show you the shrug gesture. What a shrug gesture does is to protect the carotid arteries yeah. here. Yeah. So if, so if I go like this. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm signalling is, please don't attack here. I'm I'm I'm, I'm protected. Yeah. 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 So, so this is about making making my body small and tight and protected. Right. And then, you know, what happens if? Uh, let me just move back even a little bit further. There, I make my body really. In fact, let me bring somebody else. Yeah. To and for folks who aren't in the video, he's actually spreading. You're spreading your legs. Yeah. You're spreading yourself. You're kind of mark, making yourself as big as possible. You have your arm over the chair. Right. Your legs. You're you're right. spreading yourself. So now I'm taking up territory. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm saying, this is mine. There could yeah. be somebody sitting there, and I'm saying, this is mine, this area is mine, all of this is mine, and I don't need to move quickly. Yes, I, I, I've experienced that on the airplane. Do you know when you sit next to the person on the airplane? They yeah. can put their elbows on the side rest, and it's kind of like, I own all this territory, in case you were unclear. <laughs> don't right. even think about sticking your elbow in my plane over here. Same thing. There's been, a, there's been a big thing in Toronto at the moment on the on the subway. People talking about men mm -hmm. who who are sitting on the subway and take up too much space. Yes. Yeah. yeah, spread eagle. Yeah. Yeah. I can't stand that. <laughs> so that all of this all of this happens just everywhere in life, whether it's in the office, whether it's yeah. in bars and clubs, whether it's uh, I mean you see it you see it in the um, in this gesture. Here, the, the hands on the hips yeah. gesture. This basically says, I'm bigger than you thought I was. Yeah. In fact, you see it often when people are presenting and yeah. they get a little bit under stress. They do this jacket flick out. <laughs> Here's then, that hip but, jack behind you. But unlike unlike uh, Dr. Amy Cuddy's idea of, of this powerful gesture right. here, sometimes they're not still. Yeah. yeah they're moving up and down. Yeah, they're pacing. They're basically saying, I'm now a moving target. Oh. Yeah. Sometimes you'll see them swaying from side to side. Again, yeah. this is usually showing, I would say, some kind of some kind of stress. Oh. You know, there's a big difference between being still and looking powerful and looking powerful and being on the move. Yes. Okay. Yeah? It makes, makes a big, big difference. And again, People often aren't showing power signals because they believe they're powerful. Sometimes they believe they're under threat, 
and they need to display power. Ah, fascinating. Yeah, so those kind of sick gestures that you're showing, whether you're making yourself really big or making sure. yourself really small, they're sure. demonstrations that you're not sure, but you want to display your you know, power over other people and to gesture to people, just in case you were unclear. I own this territory. I'm the person in charge. Interesting. Well, I think here's the thing we need to know is that, is that all of us, are, uh, apart from you know a few really, really expert people out there, the majority of us on the planet are really bad body readers, body yeah. language readers. Yes. I mean, cognitively. We're pretty yeah. good at, at a gut instinct, but our intelligent level to read body language is, is pretty poor. Uh, it's about 50 50. You might as well toss a coin. Great. The, around accuracy. So if somebody is doing this, I'm not really going to know if they're doing it because they're confident or doing it because they're unconfident. Right. I'd have to check some other signals, so I'd have to look for a cluster of signals. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the only really good way is to kind of ask them. <laughs> and, that, and that just might not be possible, yeah. or it might feel a bit odd, or, or they might just lie to me. Yeah. So if I say, hey, are you, are you kind of doing that because you feel threatened by what I said, or because you feel confident about your stand on it? And they yeah. might go, well, because I feel really confident. But they might be a good liar. Yeah, yeah. So it's hard to say, but you could actually probably look at their facial cues with the Paul Ekman stuff and probably tell. Like they would probably say, "Because I'm confident," and then some part of their face would go like that. Well, you know, <laughs> you could go along those whole lines of, you know, if they're if they're being deceitful, if they're being deceptive, uh, they won't they won't look at me. Yeah. But we actually know, actually, people who are being deceptive look at you more. Yeah, for too there's long. A lot yeah. of the old ideas and essentially folklore. Yeah. You know, about body language have been really over, especially around the ideas of deceit and deception, have really been overturned by current science that yeah. says, no, good liars will look at you more. Yeah. Uh, people look away for all kinds of reasons. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. And also, in, environment changes a lot of things. You know, we, we're here on this uh, on this uh, Skype call right. here, and, you know, the image of you is right in front of me right. uh, here. Yeah, in fact, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, just here. But my camera is here. Right. So I keep looking at you because I want eye contact, but actually I should be looking at you there where the camera is there. Yeah, but that gives right. me the cue that you're not, you're right. not looking so, someplace else. But so on, on a call like this, I'm constantly remembering that I should be looking at the camera and at the same time I, I want to see your face right. because you give great, you know, cues, yeah. non-verbal cues as to whether, you know, you're interested, engaged, you right. know, you're really interested in a point, you're happy about something. Right. Now, what it could come across as is that I'm being deceitful or I'm nervous or I'm... Right, and it's none of those things. It's, it's none of those things. It's just trying there. to deal with the technology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that so. is, it's an interesting thing, this whole thing about Skype, because there are so many times that now Skype is the technology that we're communicating. We're doing deals, we're talking to people, we're meeting people for the first time. I've never met you. This is the first time I've met you over Skype. So what are some things that you do? Because now if we're going to this digital Internet world, what are some things that we have to be careful of when we're doing this? Because, you know, reading your book, Winning Body Language, you know, I know that, you know, I have these different planes. I have the truth plane, which is about my stomach and opening my body up. But I, yeah. I thought, but I'm on the Internet. How can you see that my I'm opening my body up? Even Because, it's you know, oftentimes I'm like this, right? So I'm opening my body up, but you can't tell. Yeah. Well, look. <laughs> Here's the thing, um, technology may not ever get the conversation as good as when you're live one-to-one. -one. Right. Yeah? So, number one, we have to know we've been slightly compromised. Right. And this is way better than a phone call. Right. I think you'll agree, you know, the fact that I can see your face and I right. can see some of your body right. yeah, is so much better than a phone call and we are... Um, uh, connecting in a way that that, that right. we would have, we wouldn't connect right. on a phone call. Yeah, if, it, if this <laughs> was it, you know, exactly. <laughs> you'd be like, I don't know what the story is for that CJ person. Is she enjoying it or not? Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, as I talk and you're not doing anything, you could you could get up and leave the room and I wouldn't know. Right. Here, I know. 
I right. know if you've gone. Yeah, I'm actually in the bathroom, and you don't right, even know. Exactly. I'm on the phone call with you peeing, and you wouldn't even know. Exactly, exactly. So, so here I've got more data about your feeling and intention towards right. me. And again, that's what body language does. It signals now our feeling and intention towards each other in order to change each other's behavior for, for our benefit. Even though we can't see some of the things. So you talk about the truth plane in your book and how you know it's important to you know open up so that you look more you know trustworthy. Well, you can't see the whole of my body. Yeah. It's more compromised. Yeah. Uh, let's let's try this. Let's think about you know your your trust level. I'm going to give you um, no signal about me. So I'm just getting, grabbing a piece of paper here. Just to, I'm going to take my copy of Winning okay. Body Language and just cover up the camera here. Right. So now you can yeah, I can't through. see you at all, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, if you, uh, you know, I'll give you some details about okay. Winning Body Language okay. and you can see how much you trust my details. So Winning Body Language is the best-selling book in the world on body language. And you can read it all in one go, a little bit at a time. But people who read that book find there's some great tools and techniques to stand out, win trust, and profit every time they speak. Yeah, I can't um, tell one way or another. Right. So, so my guess is, is that wasn't particularly engaging. No, okay? no I didn't. I'm going to do it, and you're not going to see any of my body, but you will see uh, me talking to you. So, winning body language is the best-selling book in the world on body language. You can read it all in one go, a little bit at a time. And people who read that book find there's some great tools and techniques to stand out, win trust, and profit every time they speak. Okay. So, my guess is that was more believable and engaging. Than yeah, not. well, you were looking me right in the eyes. That was right. one cue. And then, but there's also your voice actually would change, the, the pace and tone of your voice changed as well. Right, well, I would say that I gave you that dialogue the same as when you couldn't see me. Right. What happened was, is because you can now see my face and you're getting more detail about uh, me, huh. you feel better about me and therefore you think my tone and my pace is better. Oh, that's fascinating. Okay. Now look, yeah. here's what I'm going to do now. I mm -hmm. won't be so up close to you, so you won't see so much of my facial features, but you're now going to see me gesturing to you. Right. It, what we call the, I call the truth plane here, which is this belly area. Right. So winning body language is the best-selling book in the world on body language. You can read it all in one go, a little bit at a time. And people who read that book find there's some great tools and techniques to stand out, win trust and profit every time they speak. Yeah, and actually, that was really convincing. I, it, what, there's something about that area. It really does yeah. work. If you actually no. gesture from this truth plane, which is your belly button out, right? The truth plane is this. this it's, it's basically uncovering your belly. And yeah, basically, so, you know, here's my belly button here. Yeah. You won't be able to see it quite yeah. on the camera, but, yeah. but there it is. Yeah. And I'm gesturing out from that with really open hand gestures. Yes. But even seeing more of my body yes. gives you more confidence in me. Yes, it does. It absolutely because does. Your brain, it's more data, yes. and more data is good. Yes. Therefore, I'm good. Therefore, my book is good. Right. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Give you less data again. Let me give me give you the same thing, and I'll just cover it up. Winning body language, the best-selling book in the world on body language. You can read it all in one go, a little bit at a time. And people who read that book find there's some great tools and techniques to stand out, win trust, and profit every time they speak. Yeah. Gave you the data, but I get, I, I bet part of your brain was going, yeah, does it really though? Does it yeah. really? Will you really stand out yeah. and profit? Is it really the best selling? I might, I might check that out. I'm yeah. not I'm sure. I'm going to go check on the internet to make sure. Is yeah, it? Yeah. How many books are there on, on body language? That kind of thing. Right. So look, the more somebody can see of you, the more likely they are to trust you. Mm. The reason is because they're more likely to trust their own judgment. Mm. Now, even if, even if you can see potentially negative behaviors. Right, you're covering your mouth, which is covering my mouth, which again is is less right. dangerous. Your body is your body is actually scans of the calendar. Yeah. Right, you're tilting your right. your head. You're not even looking at me. Yes. Right. So there's there's me that's showing you gestures of maybe potential disengagement. Right. Okay. Yes. Or there's me just talking onto the phone, and you can't tell whether I'm disengaged or not. Yeah. Who would you prefer? To be talking with yeah, the, the person, person who, who you see. don't quite know whether they're disengaged or not, or the person who you definitely know is disengaged. Yeah, yeah. 
Those are like half of the developers at Microsoft. That just gesture. Yeah. <laughs> at least if you can see me and judge me, yeah. you can make good decisions. Yeah. Yes. But if you can't see me, therefore you can't judge me so well, categorize me so well, how do you ever know you're making a useful, decent decision about me? Yes. Yeah. You're absolutely. better out of the conversation. It says your your primitive instinctual brain. Yeah. Essentially. Okay, so uh, we talked about things that make you look not confident or unsure, like you're, it's so, unclear. What are I'm things sure. that actually make you look confident? We talked about, you know, gesturing from the truth plane as one of the things that make you look trustworthy. Um, yeah. And I assume confident too, as well. Yeah, so I, I, I say when you're, when you're gesturing in this, in this uh, truth plane here, which you'll be able to see here as I'm sitting down, or you'll be able to see here, you know, when I stand up and, and talk to you. Very big, open gestures there in the truth yeah, plane. Yeah. What it comes across as is that I'm I'm calm and assertive. Ah, okay. That's the way I, that's the kind of phrase that I use to, to in, encapsulate right. that embodiment is calm right. and assertive. Right. There is a certain amount of of I think therefore likability right. about that. Right. And then there's things that in that you call this the passion plane, and and you yeah. see this, you know, like you know you see a lot of politicians like, come on, people, you know, blah. Yeah. So the passion plane is actually at the chest height here. Chest, okay. Yeah. Chest and above, um, or just chest here? Yeah. Because once you've got um once you've got up here, yeah. you're up in what I call ecstatic. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So hands above head is quite ecstatic. So I think you'll notice. That, you know, there's a very, as I'm having a conversation with you here, right. yeah, this is a very different, you know, expert to right. have a conversation with. If I start having the conversation with you yeah. up here, yeah, yeah, this is not the same person that you're having the conversation with. Right. Yeah, I mean, tell, yeah. me your, tell me your judgments and assumptions about me as as somebody to have a conversation with an, and an expert. Yeah, yeah, no, this is, <laughs> when you put your hands above your head, you know, in the, in the kind of, it's it's the mosh pit, you know. You're listening to a band. Right. You're like, yeah, you know. And it doesn't. I don't right. take you as seriously. It kind of feels kind of like a manic feeling when you have your hands oh, okay. above your head so and manic. you make lots of gestures. Right. Yes. It's not as serious. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Same guy. Same guy here. Yeah. I could give you exactly the same content, but now I'm gesturing here. My guess is you see me as calm and yeah. Yeah, this this feels when you're in that and when you're actually in the truth plane and you're gesturing from your belly area, it right. feels like a calm, measured banker who's like, trust me, trust me, trust me. When you're when you're talking about when you're when you've done a couple of gestures like this and you're like, you know, we got to think about it or let's let's think about it, and you're moving in the heart area, I do feel right. so I feel emotion of some sort. Right, right. So actually, what this does is when your hands move up here, the heart rate goes up, breathing yeah. rate goes up, blood pressure goes up. Yeah, and naturally things become what I would say is more passionate. Right. Now there's nothing positive or negative about being passionate. Yeah, right. it's just it's just a state. Right. Yeah? yeah. So I can say potentially negative things to you in passion as well as I can say potentially yeah. positive things. Why to did you do that to the car? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. So um, you know, I I, I could say to you, look, I, I hate the way you drive. Right. Yeah? <laughs> or I could go, I hate the way you drive. Yes, feels well, really no, different. I hate the way you drive. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hate the way you drive. Yeah. Yeah. It's fascinating. It's so subtle, but the whole covering up or uncovering, they right. do have the, that you were saying before, if you cover up your body, because I've seen before, you know, when people cross their arms, yeah. you know, it's like a covering, a protective gesture, maybe, to, you know, to protect their private, yeah. you know, areas like their throat yeah. or your heart that you could just, you know, stab. Yeah. Um, they talk about that a lot in martial arts. You know, they, they have you stand yeah. like this, you know, because yeah. you're trying to protect your throat and whatever, that right. it, those private areas. Right. So it's the same with body language. These are, these are kill points on the body. You'll yeah. know that from martial arts. Yeah, your throat, body, yeah. You're either going to cut off the air supply to the whole of the body. Yes. Or cut off the supply of blood to the brain. Right. Yeah. Or your heart. Yeah. These are the things that you're like, don't touch me here because these are going to kill me. Right. So I would say in general, though, the heart, mm -hmm. like, it's pretty safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? I mean, well, have a listen to this. Yeah. <laughs> no problem at all. There's no way I'm doing that there. Yeah. 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 
No, even have a, have a, get a sense of, of, of this. If I, I can poke myself here and I'm yeah. fine, but what happens when I poke myself here in the same belly, way? yeah, hurts. I, I have to stop up too oh. and I need to do a surrender gesture. Yes, right. So the belly and the throat are vulnerable areas. That's what we're trying to protect. It's our natural right. animal instinct. Right. We want to protect this because if this gets attacked, gorged in any way, digestive juices get into the bloodstream and you're, yeah. you're dead. The acidity yeah. of the blood goes up. You, you, I mean, even, even if you're not dead immediately, the amount of sepsis that's going to happen. Yeah. Or just even like if a punch to the stomach versus a punch to the chest punch versus a punch in the throat, what's right. going to hurt more? That's why with your body language, you're kind of it's signaling like, don't hurt these things. Right. Yeah. And that's I why when we're in mo moments of bravado. Yeah. That we actually display this area here because it's not that vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. You mean nothing to me, buddy. Right. Come yeah. on, man. You know, there's... <laughs> <laughs> so there's, a very, there's a big difference with somebody showing aggression here. Yeah. Yeah. Or showing aggression from there. Oh, yeah. The martial arts dudes who are kind of like, they'll stand and they'll right. just look at you and everything is in their downtown, which is their stomach area. And you exactly. will not mess with them. They look right. like you know, terrifying. That, if that area moves towards you at, at speed pace yeah. into your dantian, into yeah. your center, you're going to get knocked over. Yeah, in a second. And you and when you see people who are real martial arts people, they'll just sit there like this, and you will not mess with them because they right. – and they're not even blocking. They're just – but their hands are ready to block right. if they need right. to. But so, so – the, the body language that I work with uses uses you know all of those kind of same principles about trying to understand there are some fundamentals around the survival of the body mm -hmm. and we're naturally programmed right to to respond right. so uh, we will do protective gestures here and they'll be self soothing you know if I'm yeah. if I'm anxious I might start to do these kind yeah. of gestures yeah. which is only protecting of this area yeah. But that's also, what I get. That's what I see in meetings where like, do you think that plan? Are you okay with actually us taking over X, yeah. Y, and Z? It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think. Or or this thing. I'm delivering bad news. You, right. got, I see this kind of self-soothing kind of thing too. Yeah. So it's interesting. What we actually know is that palms of hands on skin rubbing produces oxytocin. Yes. In the brain, it actually makes us yeah. feel. I've talked to people where, like, if, if, if you're feeling, if you need to give yourself self love, literally hug yourself, like, hug yourself. It actually does make a difference because of the reason oh, that you just said. It yeah. It actually makes a difference to levels of oxytocin. Yeah. It's That's not some crazy idea, it's just science. Yeah. That's biology. Yeah. The same as if, if you've got a dog or a cat. Yeah. Stroke the dog or yeah. the cat. Yeah. <laughs> same thing. You'll produce oxytocin, exactly. it'll get some oxytocin. You'll start to feel really connected yeah. with your dog. Yeah. You might actually start to feel your dog is kind of you and you're kind of your dog because that's what the chemical <laughs> oxytocin does. It fuzzes the boundaries of self. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so the things that you do when you're confident are talking through this part, even talking through this part. So what are the other things? Right. Um, so yeah, con you know, if I just wanted eye to show, show, yes, that's a good idea. Actually, eye contact. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, eye contact means you and me. Eye contact is is targeting essentially. Right. Yeah. Eye contact means you and me. Right. If I if I flick my eye contact around or talk to you and I'm, I'm looking definitely down the left or right or those kind of things. Contact, yeah. It, it's potentially not going to get make you feel confident that we're in a relationship yeah this when i'm looking well, this makes me feel like you're not paying attention to me you're not sure you're feeling something something's happening and i don't know what's going on right so eye contact simply means between people you and yeah. me now it doesn't tell you anything about the quality of the relationship though, yeah that's true because it could be um you know uh you and me angry yeah i could look at you like this happy. yeah yeah. yeah, I could be looking at you like this, and I'm I'm looking right at you, but I'm about right. to scold you. <laughs> right. So that somebody is looking at you doesn't mean anything other than they are. There is a relationship. Right. For me. You know, even if it's a quick look, it was a moment of relationship. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Now, the very paranoid person might just take that and go, "What are you looking at?" Yes. Yeah. Or there's sometimes people looking at you. And it's uncomfortable, like, 
you're looking too much and it looks kind of creepy, like don't look at me. Sometimes right. there's that too. So it's not usually the eye contact, it's other signals that come. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna look I'm gonna look directly um, at you okay. now. Okay. But I'm going to look directly at you, and I'm going to give you uh, what should come across as a full Duchenne smile. So you should be able to see there'll be little wrinkles. Yes, I see the little yeah. wrinkles on the sides of your eyes. Yeah. You're smiling. Yeah, it should, and it should mean I'm, I'm looking directly down the camera at you at the moment, so I'm, I'm getting clear yeah. eye contact with yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. But if you've seen this for more than three seconds, it should give you a good feeling. Yeah, and you I might do. I feel comfortable. You start to be yeah. smiling. Back. Nice guy. It's like yeah. dogs walking yeah. on the street. You're like, oh, they're smiling. They're happy. It makes me happy. Yeah. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do is only give you half the signal. I'm okay. going to take the eyes away. So you've got now insufficient data for a full smile. Okay. Yeah. So here I go. <laughs> That's just creepy. Right. So here's what you need to understand. Yeah. Is that if I give you insufficient data for the smile, you are not an optimist about me. You default to negatives. Yes. Yeah? yeah. Now I think what you're probably seeing is, in me is probably predatory. Yes. Yeah. yeah? But yeah. you have no data for yeah. I'm predatory. Uh, so it's what all you about have is data. insufficient data. Yeah, that makes sense. It's all about data. It's all right. about what your what your eyes are picking up in terms of okay, do I does it look safe? Does it not look safe? Do how many data points do I have when you're covering up the book or not covering? Whether you're doing this or not, it's all about your data and what you're gathering. And sometimes the data could be incorrect, like you're saying. This may be someone who's comfortable or super insecure about the situation. You don't know. But this could be someone who's really cold. They don't have a sweater, yeah. or they feel insecure. Well, in fact, that's really interesting. Let's let's look at that because my my guess is is you've you've read other body language books. Yeah. If you haven't, you've talked to people who've read yes, other I body have, language yeah. books. Okay? And um, my guess is, is you've come across this general law out there that says this is closed. Yeah. Yeah? Now, just tell me, biologically or behaviorally, what are some of the reasons why you think people actually cross their arms? Well, some sometimes the they're like, they're defiant. Like sometimes it, it does feel I, like, I'm standing my ground. Mm -mm, nope, not yeah. doing. It's like a bound. It's a boundary, a personal boundary between me right. and them. So it is a defensive. And so sometimes it's like, wrong. yeah. Sometimes I'm cold. Like sometimes I'm like this because I'm cold. Right. You got two glands under here which deal yeah. with with produce a lot of heat. Yeah. And one of the ways of keeping that heat is to close up around the armpits. Yeah. There. Like yeah, some guys also, do because they have they have pits and they don't want people to see their pit stains. Right. It could be insecurity about right. that my pits yeah, are a bit I'm kind sweaty, of sweating so. and I don't want you to see that I'm sweating too much. Yeah. Give me some give me some other reasons. Um I'm constraining myself because I'm about to like punch you in the face. Right. So I don't I arms. don't want to do that action right. of getting angry yeah, with exactly. this action of suppressing my yeah, I'm trying to, it's like a self soothing, calming, it's centering. Okay. And, and we were talking earlier about about yeah. self yeah, this self kind of thing. Yeah. We also know that actually people often do this because they're trying to stay engaged. Because where else do they put their hands? Yeah, that's they're true. Sometimes sitting. I'm on a table like this because it's just oh. uncomfortable to sit yeah. on a table like so, this. So people could be doing this just because the environment dictates that there's nowhere else really to put your to arms. Yeah, that's and, true. But, but they're not closed. They're not yeah. defiant. They're not protecting anything. They're actually trying to stay quite engaged with you. In fact, one of the ways we can stay awake is keeping our hands higher up and not letting yeah. them fall that's down. So, yeah. you know, we've been chatting about, about just crossed arms for, I don't know, like three minutes or something right. like that. And we've come up with, you know, maybe let's just say about, about five or seven different reasons why people can cross their arms. I've done this with groups of people, and, and we've, we've gone past 20 wow. reasons why people, yeah. people cross, cross their arms. Right. So, so, you know, anybody who's saying, oh, if somebody crosses their arms, it means they're closed. It's like, right. yeah, maybe. Yeah. Or maybe that, or maybe that, or maybe that, or maybe that, or maybe. Right. So you're going to have to read other signals. You're going to have to look at the context. Mm. You're going to, if you want to really know, you might have to ask right. and go, so I've noticed that you just crossed your arms and I'm wondering, are you cold or are you upset about something or did I say something right. that you're defiant against or. <laughs> Yeah, or what's going on? I feel like it's a, I also feel a sense of resistance, dude. Is there a part of you that it feels a little bit 
not sure about this or whatever. And they could say, oh, no, I'm just cold or no. Right. And they might say, they might say, no, I'm not resistant. I'm just feeling a bit chilly and I might be able to go on. So shall I turn up the heating? Then? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I don't know. But but but. But that might not be appropriate in the setting to ask such questions. Yeah. But you're never really going to know unless you interview or interrogate the person. Yeah, it's a subtle that type might, of thing. And you may not have time for that. Right. Yeah. You know, um, you know facts, uh, as somebody once said to me, are expensive. So if I want to know the factual truth mm -hmm. of why you're doing what I'm doing, it could be quite an expensive exercise. Yes, that's true. Okay. And I may not have... The expense of the time and resource right. to find to find that or the out. relationship to ask, right? I mean, it's kind of sometimes it's an awkward thing. Okay, so now we're going to go. Let's actually switch gears a little bit for females and males. Are there different sure. kind of cues that women have that are different than men? Yeah. So, um, you know, I would say that there are often cultural differences, male and female. Mm -hmm. You know, defined by the tribe, the culture, the group, the gang, the the, the right. company, yes. that your family, right. that you're keeping, which are about expectations about the way a female should behave and the way a male should okay, behave. Okay, so like if I so if I think of Japanese, I'm Asian, so the Japanese right. is like, <laughs> you know, they laugh and they cover their mouth because you're not supposed to show your mouth, like, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. so that's yeah, exactly. a cultural thing for women. It's, it's cultural, and therefore, for me to see that, because I'm not Japanese culturally, I'm right. English right. culturally, I kind of go, what are you doing? Yeah, but that's weird. What, that? <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I might not like that. Right. Well, yeah. you don't like, usually people don't feel comfortable when they're talking. You can't, um, you're missing data and information. What is that? Right. <laughs> you know, right. what's that all but about? In the right tribe group, that might be the acceptable thing for you to do. Now, okay. acceptable doesn't mean it's the best thing or the, or the right thing or the useful thing. Right. But it is the accepted norm. Right. Yeah? Yes. So, so let me think about some some of the accepted norms that I sometimes uh, here's what I'll say that I sometimes notice some of my my female clients doing right yeah and it isn't helping them around confidence right okay let's okay, see okay that, yeah. that makes sense um, so so often what I see is some female clients coming to me and then. They're often very much when they talk up in the passion plane. Oh, right. Here. So you're just they're moving their hands up and around yeah. their heart area. Yeah, up here. Now, yeah. look, there's nothing wrong with that because because body language is body. There's no bad body language. There's right. just results that you didn't want. Right. Okay. Right. And and my clients tend to be um, people who are or want to be top performers. Right. In their area. Right. Okay. And they're finding, they'll come to me and they'll go, you know, I'm, I'm at the boardroom table, there's a lot of males around, I'm competing with those males, because still as a predominancy right. on boards, right. yeah, you're going to have more males than males. It's right. being changed, it's being legislated for, in fact, right. in, some, in some areas, right. but it's still not there yet in terms right. of equality. Right. And, 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 and I'll say, so, so show me how you speak at the, at the boardroom, have a co boardroom conversation with me. And they start getting up here. Right. Okay. And also, the voice pitches up. Yeah. Upward intonation. Yeah. yeah. Because and, maybe and, I'll seem like a little girl and you'll like me more. Right. So here's what I think tends to happen around. Yeah. around. So all of these behaviors often start with, with the family. Right. Huh. Start with the, with the family that you grew up with, whether mm -hmm. it's your genetic family or whatever primary caregivers were looking mm -hmm. after you and, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, making sure you had what you needed at the time. Right. Is... is Often, uh, look, in general, a female, in general, is going to have less testosterone than a male. Right. That's not always true. Right. But look, we aggregated all males and all females across the planet and test testosterone. Males would be higher and females would be lower. Right, right. It was averaged out. Yeah. One of the things testosterone does, if you've got a lot of it, is, is that it makes the vocal cords flaccid and therefore you get a deeper tone. Ah, okay. okay. If you've got less testosterone, your voice will go higher, right. essentially. Yeah. There's, some, there's just some basic physics around low sounds, low vibrations, and high vibrations. Right. Low vibrations ripple out everywhere and bounce off big walls and stuff. Yeah. 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 And high vibrations are just more directional. Yeah. 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 
if I've got a low voice, I have an advantage to be heard. That's true. Unless it's like this and I can't hear you. Well, well unless it's quiet and quiet yeah, and, and low. Like, but even so, a low voice, you will actually feel it um, shake your body. Yes. Yeah. Especially if it's bouncing off walls, it goes subsonic and you, you feel it yeah. shake. Yeah? yeah. And low voice says, I'm big. Because big things are more likely to produce a low ah, sound. Ah, interesting. Yeah. So, a male, yeah, is going to have an advantage around the dinner table right. getting heard. That is get, so true. Right. A female, in order to compete, yeah, to get heard, may have to signal in, in an eye level that, that they want to speak, yeah, mm. and may have to pitch the voice up to an alarm signal, yeah, uh. so, so people get alerted. Yeah. Uh, so now around the boardroom table, yeah. which in, in any company essentially comes from the dinner table. Company is from the Latin compania to eat bread together. Right. Yeah. It's just a dinner table. Right. Family sit round to, to get shares in the bread. Yeah. Oh, okay. interesting. So around that corporate dinner table, yeah, you've now got somebody who is alarming yeah. and passionate. Right. Yeah. And may well actually shock or scare the other males right. around the table. Yes. And therefore, if there's more than usually two, right. they'll suppress that as a gang. Yes. I had that. I, I would be in meetings at Microsoft, 40 right. men and me, and I, it would take so long to just get in a word because right. of that dynamic. Right. Fascinating. And even when you did get in a word, if you were up here and sharp and upwards with your voice, they would probably attack that. Yeah, she's a prattling bitch, right? right. That's what they hear. Right. Exactly. Look, none of this is true. Yeah. But I'd just be saying, I'd be saying, if you were my client, I'd be saying, look, they will recognize and pay attention and respect calm and assertive. Mm -hmm. yeah? So what I want you to do is, when you're at that boardroom table, I want you to push back so you take up more space. Right. I want you to put your hands in the truth plane. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the table. You know, expand yeah. your chest more. Yeah. So that you therefore have more chest resonance, a lower voice, and come across as more calm and assertive. Mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. Yes. Got it. So, so for women, they have to, yeah. Is change your environment, change mm -hmm. your body, so they see you a different way and you even feel a different way. Yes. Yes. About yeah. 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 So, so you know, I see that. I see that with with um, with females. The other thing that I've noticed, as a, again, as a generalization, this is never saying all females. I, I've never met all females. <laughs> so nobody ever has. So right. Don't, no, I hear uh, you. Don't know actually how men perform and females perform. Right. These are absolute generalizations. But but like any generalization, there could be an element of truth. Yeah, absolutely. For you or anybody listening um, and yeah. watching. You know, if I make generalization, often, you know, females when when a little more uncomfortable will cover their their private part. sexual characteristics yeah. by propping the legs. Yeah. 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 And and if they're in high heels, yeah. that will make them very unstable. Right, yeah. yeah. Whereas a male when under stress, they'll they'll cover their primary sexual characteristics like this. Yes. Yeah? And, again, there's nothing good, there's nothing potentially um, calm and assertive about that. It's just they're actually a little more stable. Yes. Even yeah. when like this. And yeah. the female, you know, in, in, the, in one of the, some cultural norms sometimes of the high heels, yeah, yeah. this is now very, very unstable. Yeah. Now, put their hands up here, Right. And a high pitched voice. <laughs> oh, God. Basically, you've got a you've got a, a, a an architecture of the body that in no way instills yeah uh, confidence about the solidity. Of yeah, that. you look like an unstable mess. Right. Basically. And now I'm trying to pitch you with how stable my management would be of right. your operation. Ah, uh, yes, that's a very it doesn't, interesting. Doesn't yeah. look stable. Right. Right. Yeah. So again, I'll, I'll work with clients to go. Look, you, you know, you need to stand, uh, you know, with with your leg, with your legs kind of hips hips apart, 
hands in that truth plane there, nice big broad gestures, open hands there. Yeah, and if you start to feel uncomfortable and nervous, don't do any of that stuff. Just stay here, calm and assertive. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, those are those are uh, you know generalizations in the world of, of of business. You know, if we go to the world of kind of the the the, the bar and dating and you know yeah. all of that kind of stuff, uh, you know, women generally have different flirting signals than males. Okay, what are the women flirting? Be a woman and flirt with me. That's a yeah, woman and flirt. Well, okay, so so uh, one of the things that um, a female, a classic kind of female flirting gesture, is to show you the quality of the hair. Oh yeah, look how shiny and, and look how shiny, shiny and, and strong, and yeah. Which color it is? Yeah. So we understand that if your hair is, if the if the hair has good color, yeah, yeah, and it's shiny, you have a nutrient rich diet. Yeah, I'm not just gonna go like this. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Got it, okay. Me and say, analyze that. Yes. <laughs> it's clear I'm good genetic stock. I, yeah, okay. good genetic stock. I come from a land with good diet. Therefore, right. if we mate, good genetic stock and good food source right. where I live. <laughs> that's essentially, but that's essentially what that, that flirt gesture is. The is, yeah. Yeah, now luckily we can get all of that nutrient-rich stuff out of a bottle nowadays, straight yeah. onto your Thank hair. And, and, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> But it doesn't suppress that natural desire Right. To to display. Yes. You know, it's interesting. I was I was looking at a study recently about on um, online the selling of women's underwear. <laughs> okay. okay. Don't ask me why I'm <laughs> looking at yeah, studies. Yeah. Why are you looking study. at this? Yeah. Because it's about behaviour. Yes. And um, what they noticed, or this study was noticing, is the. The underwear that sold the best tended to have pictures of, of the, the model uh, uh, showing the underwear touching their hair. Wow. To a male is a clear flirt signal. Wow. Clear, I, I'm, I'm interested in you. I'm right. showing you the quality of my hair. Wow. Fascinating. Yeah. Now, what that might do, I would suspect, to a male or a female who might be a buyer of that product, right. is the male goes, uh, that's, that's a good product because it's being worn by somebody who's interested in me. Right. All they need to see is that signal. Right. That is too funny. I love it. for a female, what a female might be thinking, who might be a potential buyer, is, is going... Oh, she's she's gonna get herself a mate doing that signal right. there. I better get some Those of that. Undies, yeah. Those are the undies for me. Yeah, because then I'll be able to compete with her. Yeah. Interesting. I love it. These are fantastic. We've been talking to Mark Bowden, talking about his book, Winning Body Language. Thank you so much for being here. These are fantastic tips. It's it's a great pleasure. You know, it's great fun talking to you. It's great having a, a, a conversation. Uh, with you. So thanks for taking the time with me. Thanks Thank everybody you. for watching. All right. Thanks so much. It means so much to me that you're listening to the show. I would love your support in any way by giving me comments below or to subscribe to the show or share the show with friends. Thank you again for your support. Love and blessings.